Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video we are making a really cool thing. This is DIY faux ancient paper scrolls. A paper scroll is simply a roll of paper used for writing or drawing and it was a common form of document in ancient times. In these modern times, I've taken the idea of the paper scroll and adapted it to fit within the junk journaling niche, which is what Treasure Books is all about. This is a really fun idea. It's easy and I think you're gonna love it. All right, let's begin. All the paper scrolls I made so far were made using pages from this book. It doesn't have to be a book page. It can be any paper that you have. The size of the paper doesn't really matter. You know, you can use book pages this normal size. I'm cutting these in half anyway. So the base of the paper scroll can be just tea dyed paper, clear, plain paper, any type of paper that you have. But this is the one that I'm using simply because it's easier. I've already thought out the process and I'm sticking with this. You can, of course, use mixture of paper as well. So you can do book pages, plain paper, music pages, and so on. So at this stage, you can determine the height of your scroll. How high do you want the scroll? Or how tall, I should say. So you can see here, my um, the height that I've used so far is pretty much the half you know, about half of this page. So that's kind of what I'm sticking with. This one here, I've added uh, the ruffles. I'm gonna show you all the details to go give you more examples as we go along. You can also use different height pages. So this one's, we'll get to that. So, all right, so I've just ripped that in half and I used my tear ruler, which I have this tear ruler. I also have a homemade version of a tear ruler. This is plastic and you can just sand some ridges in there. But in any case, you can just rip the pages as well. But I am using my tear ruler for this project. And in fact, I want all four sides of the paper that I'm using to, to have uneven, jagged, deckled edges. It just adds to the overall characteristic of that vintage feel. That's what we're going for. Well, it's what I'm going for. You might not want to be so vintagey and grungy, but I think considering the fact that we're doing the paper scrolls, which are not really around much anymore, it just makes sense to go vintage. There's a couple of different things I want to point out here. At this stage, you decide if you want your roll to be rolling up from right to left or left to right. This might be important for you, or it might not. It might not matter at all. At all. In my case, I want, let's say this moth, I want it to be visible here. When the scroll is closed, I want the moth to be on the outside. I have decided to roll all of my scrolls from right to left. This one's not done, by the way. It's not finished. So I decided to roll everything, as you can see, from right to left rather than left to right. If I rolled left to right, then this page here, this would be the visible side. I hope this makes sense. And it's really not that much of a, you know, an issue. But when you start decorating your paper scroll, it might be. Anyway, it's just another thing to keep in mind. Another thing that you can sort of keep in mind, I suppose, at this uh, step when you're ripping up your pages is the size of the pages. So for this scroll here, what I decided to do is to go from a smaller page and then each page gets just a little bit taller so that when I roll it up, you can see the layers. And I think this is a really beautiful look. I love how all of the layers uh, visible and poking out. Whereas in the previous journals, I mean paper scrolls that are made, you can see this one here, they're all of the pages and I used four pages here, they're all exactly the same height, same as this one here. By the way, you can have two pages, you can have four, you can have 28. It really doesn't matter how many pages you prepare. The more pages you have, the more rolling up you have and the more space you have. It just the real the roll can just keep going on and on and on and the more decorating and the more work, of course. I have chosen only two pages for this scroll that I'm making on video today. However, I just want to show you at this stage because we're choosing the number of pages. This one here has a total of four pages. There's one, two, three, four. This one has only three pages. 
this one here which I really think that I like the best only two pages but quite a lot happening okay we'll come back to that next thing I want to do is grunge this up of course you can go and you can tea dye it but what I did with mine and I have some prepared here so that I'm not wasting time see this suck up they're all very grunged up that's a lot more than just the tea dyeing process and I'm going to show you how I achieved this so easy look at this I love that effect anyway this is how I did it first thing you need is some sort of a slick surface you can use a plastic bag if you want for this or cereal bag all right slick surface this is just wax coated paper you need some inking pads maybe gloves too while you're at it and some water all right so I have three inking pads I'm just using whatever I have available so I have a light brown I have like a um, reddish type color dark wine red and a dark brown and then I just do this all right this one's pretty new um, ink pad so you can see a lot of color there and then I might do this one this one's really old but still some color there happening um, I might even you know just mix them up maybe not too much anyway so you can see that I've got some color on there and then I just go ahead and spray with some water and then I grab my paper you you might not even need to start with this much ink you could also do the same with watercolors just get a bunch of watercolor on there and then you get these real grungy look at that you know you want to pick up a bit of red you go there it might all get mixed up and what I did on some of them like this one here I did a bit of red and then I added a bit of brown and then went around the edges I don't know what I did I just kind of did it just went with whatever and you know first page usually has a whole lot of ink like this on it might do the edges just do the edges you know you don't have to get any perfect impressions in, in there just something like that if you just pop it down and lift it up you might get fun stuff happening you know have a little play all right so that's that one i am going to pop this one to the side to dry love that so i just pop it on a scrap piece of magazine page and wait for it to dry and then now the second page you know just pick up whatever colors on there it's really quite fun because you get to play a little you can use watered down paints if you don't have inks like this or you can just simply coffee dye your pages or tea dye them you know so you can see now I'm picking up a lot less color than the first one so let's see maybe I want to add some spots of really dark grungy brown color so I'll just do this and then I might just go in like this just do the edges and then this way you have some really dark spots and then you have some really light spots and you know just fun and I'm just gonna pick up the rest see that you can do that with just coffee very strong coffee to get the same kind of effect now I just want to pick up what's left don't want to be wasting anything there we have it okay now this is going to side to dry I don't do the full-on grungy look in general when I'm making journals I mean I love the look of really grungy journals but it's not generally something that I go for however for this project I think the grunge look looks absolutely fabulous so what I did so that I'm not wasting time today I have some pages here ready to go and they have dried completely and there's barely any warping which is surprising but it is quite thick paper so maybe that's why and then on these two I just went ahead and glued down a tea bag you can see tea bag there I have a whole collection of tea bags that I use in projects and I've had plenty of videos and look how grungy this one looks love that and then even better if you have some tea dried tea particles left over perfect for this texture you can see that this part here is handmade paper people often ask me if the tea bags go moldy uh, in projects absolutely not because it's there's no water it's dry it's been completely dried so no mold and like i said this here is handmade paper and it's got those little bits of leaves and who knows what in there and i've ripped edges glued it down and now I have kind of like a canvas to work with and I have four pages here I'm just trying to decide what to do for the video today what I wanted is some bits sticking out so that when I roll the paper scroll you can see this 
the bits are sticking out. I love that look. And then when you have two pages or four pages or five or eight or ten and you have all those little bits sticking out, it just gets more and more and more fun around the edges here. All right, I think I'm just going to use these two pages today because they're really calling to me. All right, so you've got your pages and you have grunged them up if you wish to do so. And now what you want to do is attach them to each other so you're attaching all the pages together there are a few different ways that you can go about this you can simply overlap them like this and glue them together just like that very easy and simple you can glue the glue this part you can sew this part a zigzag stitch would be really cool and just do the same thing for all of them what i really enjoyed uh, to do is instead of hinging the pages on top of each other, I wanted to pop something in between them so that I get this kind of a look. And I know that you can't see, but it's it sticks up like this. Rather than if you glued them all together, when you open your journal, they would all be curved the same way. So there would be none of this. I don't know if that makes any sense. Same as this one here. I don't know if you can see that. When I open up, instead of the whole thing being curved, it does this because I have an extra piece of lighter material. I'll tell you what this is in a second, but check that out. I have a piece of that material in between the two pages. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Let's talk about the options of what you can use in there. All right, let's look at this beauty first. Look at this, okay? This is that part in the middle that I've shown you just now and this and I actually did this in a video which I will link up here and in the description box so you can go and have a look at that after you see this video basically all that is is cheesecloth it's cheesecloth but it's almost like a skin you know it's very very strong and sturdy because look at this oh shiny on the other side I don't know I just love that very easy to make as you've seen it's quite sturdy so I like using this as hinging so that's option number one and then what I would do is I might as well prepare it now it's kind of not that easy to rip but it's not that hard either you have to apply a bit of work in there in case you're wondering but is it strong enough to hold the two pieces together yes it is strong enough but then again I'll also be sewing around a look at that it's kind of blended, blending in with the table, but I'm sure that you can see the total grunginess of this piece, which I'm loving at the moment. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but today it's totally 100% my cup of tea. All right, option number one. This one here, I have the same thing here. And then for the next one, I have a few different things actually in this one. There's only three hinges. So this here is just packaging. You can see from the other side, you recognize this. A lot of like Amazon packages and stuff like that come with that paper. You know, this type of stuff. Nothing special. Grunge it up, smoosh it up, pop a little ink on it, you know, make it really grungy. And then on this one here, oh, I love this piece. I'll show you what that came from. Well, I can't show you because I have no idea where I put it, the original thing. But this pretty much just came from an album, an old album that I've pulled apart. And then this type of paper is like a handmade, really absorbent paper. You can see that texture. And, you know, it's not even, it's almost like napkins or tissues. Like it's not, you know, it does have a bit more firmness to it. What I'm trying to say is that this type of paper picked up the color the same technique that I just did, it really soaked it up so you can see a difference like this. This is quite a dark one here, but you, you can't compare the amount of pigment that this type of paper picked up. So that's what I did there. I just ripped it up and you can see that there. And then I threaded some yarn through there. Anyway, we'll come back to that later. So this one was option number three, which is pretty much anything you have on hand. Anything you have, I'm trying to say, you know, you can do something like this. This is just from a box that I ripped up and I thought, oh, that would look really cool. Perhaps not that way. Maybe, maybe something like this could be a hinge if I had ripped it up a little bit better. And then it even rolls up beautifully because it's got those ridges and I could go ahead and make it real grungy, you know, add a bit of color, maybe even like do something like that, getting grungy with it. See? 
that's pretty much all that I've used because once I found things that I love like these pieces and this piece here I just stuck with that so I just kept using that uh, over and over I haven't actually used something like this but I think it would look wonderful all right so at this step you have decided what hinging method you're going to use and then you can go ahead and start you know playing around adding a bit of grunge you can do just anything that comes to mind anything at all if you have a piece of this on your desk you know sew it on then what else do i have i have this i'm just picking up stuff off my desk leftover bits you know i can do like anything that comes to mind pop that down sew it on you know or hold it down with the bread or put some hot glue i don't know or staple it i don't want to let this go now because i like it you know just use a stapler staple it down should i do that all right, I'll do it. I only have a little stapler. I don't know if it's going to work. <gasps> and it ran out of staples. That always happens, doesn't it? But while I'm at it, I just want to show you a little thing that you probably know anyway. But I colored all of these shapies ahead of time. Shapies? Uh, sh um, staples? Using a Sharpie, hence the shapie. I probably like this one the most. I'm going to go with that. I don't know what I was thinking, doing pink and blue. and In any case, that's something that you can do. You can use alcohol inks. All right, there we go. So as I was saying, at this stage, you kind of come in and you start embellishing your pieces. I'm only working with two. Oh, I did that upside down. Okay, change of plans. That's going to be my front page. I did that upside down. So that's going to be my front. So you can play around here as much as you want. You can finish the whole piece. Add a little bit of journaling space, add some photographs perhaps, maybe those Tim Holtz dolls would look good on this sort of thing as well. But there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. With this type of project, because everything is being curved and rolled up, you have to make sure that all of the little bits and pieces that you put down are completely glued down because if it's not it's gonna lift especially around the edges so for example let's say you want to use this type of thing which I think would look really really cool with this theme we're going on I simply wouldn't use this I, I just wouldn't because it's quite thick and then when it's rolled up it's got little pieces like this little cut out pieces you know it's not one big chunky piece like you can see here this dark piece here just one chunk of paper it's not like an intricate little design that has all these little grooves okay because the more intricate the design and i guess the thickness like thickness also kind of matters the more issues you're going to have when you're rolling this up and then things are going to be lifting and when it comes to that sort of thing i'm bothered by that you might not be like i'm bothered if that's not completely glued down i don't like lifting things lifting so that's totally up to you however do keep in mind if you have 10 different little pieces on a page and all of them are lifting it's like it's an issue isn't it so what i tend to do is generally i will stick to larger pieces but thin like i'm looking for kind of thin kind of like copy paper thin do i want to use this no maybe i can do a little journaling space there and another journaling space so we're going for the grunge so i'm just gonna you know rip up those edges make it look really grungy so this step of kind of decorating it can really take a lot of time so try not to go too crazy with trying to get everything perfect don't overthink the process too much and as i'm saying it to you i'm saying it to myself as well because I'm 100% guilty of overthinking the process. I'm really embracing the grunge today. And if I'm being honest, it really makes the whole thing easier. So this is like a pretend sticky tape. So at this stage, as you've worked out, I'm just placing elements down to see where I want what, what I need to kind of sew down or glue down first and, and go from there. Uh, this is also where you would perhaps add some stamping, such as what I did here for this one, make art, just stamped that there. And then this one here, inspire. So you can see on this one, there's quite a lot of happening there. Very grungy. One, two, three, four pieces, and then five and six pretend washi tape, uh, sticky tape, I mean. And it looks actually a lot more. It looks very busy. But And then over here, we have one, two, three, 
four pieces four pieces of paper and I left this kind of for like journaling or you know have a little tab up here just all the different things that you can do oh and I have the pretend sticky tape there I love this idea with the book page I mean the music uh, bits We'll come back to the others a little bit later. I'll show you all of them in more detail to give you more ideas. But at this stage, we're just placing things down, deciding. And I'm thinking this needs some sort of an image, but I'm not really sure what to go with. And I'm feeling a little bit stuck and a bit blank at the moment. So what I'm going to do is forget about the image for now. I'm just going to start gluing things down. I'm actually going to mostly rely on sewing to keep everything stuck down. But for now, I'm just applying the glue stick and making sure I get all of the edges. You want all the edges down. I'm going to go to my sewing machine and sew this. What's going to happen when I fold this paper later when it's scrolling up, there's going to be some lifting of the paper. And that's just to be expected because we're rolling the pages. So you can't be a perfectionist when it comes to this. What you can do, however, is scrunch up your own, you can't even see it. This is the piece that I used. I have just scrunched up the piece of paper and then did some inking over the top. And then I glued that down. So when you glue it down, it kind of flattens out uh, quite a bit, but it keeps that appearance of, you know, when you look in the light, well, you can't see for some reason, but I can feel all the ridges, right? So. When you do it intentionally, then it looks good. It kind of like this one as well. I, I sort of did add a, a little bit too. You can see this here. A anyway, let's just keep going. Okay, so I've taken that to my sewing machine and did that stitch all around. It could just even be a straight stitch. You could even do hand embroidery. And you'll, you'll see here when, I'm, when I do this, how the paper is lifting. It's just something to keep in mind. I just also wanted to say that I know sometimes I might, you know, I worry about this, like, do I talk too much? Sometimes I think, okay, just get on with the thing, okay? And sometimes I get comments as well from people, you talk too much, or some random comment like that. The thing is, these little details are the details that matter. All the things that I say are all the things that I think about when I'm working, and then I can create pieces that I'm happy with. The little things are important, like, bits not lifting that's important for this kind of thing you don't want to open your thing or, or gift it to someone and they open it and it's sticking up all over the place it's just not good okay i'll stop talking now so i've decided with this piece i'm just going to sew all around the two pieces and i'm just gonna sew right through my book page i forgot to do the glue stick first because i was too busy talking so it is what it is and it will be fine. And here we go, lots of random sewing. Something was happening here. And so I just changed stitch. And you know, all this thread, it really goes with the whole thing. Like you can even do something cool like this. Let get some black thread. Maybe I'll do that here. Let's see. Hmm, I like that. And then glue this straight on top of that. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. This whole grunge theme gives you a whole lot of freedom because you can do stuff like this, you know. Oh, I want that to go back in there as well, like that. So I'm just thinking a little something would look really nice with this. And for example, something like this, the light isn't the best, but this butterfly, the only issue is it's not gonna work even if I removed the layers. I don't know, but like how cool does that look? Oh, but then when it's rolled up, you know, it just, it's not, I'm not going to use it, but that's fine. I can always come back to it later. So now at this point, I don't feel like it's finished, but I've got these two pages ready and all I have to do next is hinge the pages. So as I said before, you can do this as step number one and then go ahead and embellish everything, and roll it up, or you can do it really whenever. I prefer to do my sewing simply because it's easier to move one small piece through the sewing machine rather than having two pieces attached and then working with, you know, imagine if you had four or five, it's impossible with the sewing machine. So that's why I kind of do this first and then I hinge. I'm gonna use this to hinge. And here we go, that's been hinged together. And now the next thing I'm going to do is roll this up and see how it looks. You can have it in a tight roll or you can have it in a sort of a 
looser roll, I suppose. I kind of like something in the middle. All right, and that's how it's going to look from the outside. So now we're looking at doing something here. If you wish, you, you can go ahead and do something on the back. Generally, I haven't done anything on the back, but I want to do something here. And also we have to do the closure. So before I go ahead and finish off this one, I want to show you the ones I've already made just to give you some ideas on all the things that you can do, including all the different types of closures. So you have seen this one up close. I applied the ruffle up the top and bottom. That one is applied on the inside. And then this ruffle is applied on the back side so that it's visible once the uh, journal, I was gonna say, once the roll, the scroll is rolled up. So you can see that ruffle applied on the outside and the one on the inside it looks like this it looks really rich and really fun all i did to embellish the outside of this one is really not much i just stamped a three for who knows what reason and did some eyelets here and looped this twine through this eyelet and if you notice i have one short end and then one long end and that's because what i want to do is wrap the long end around like this you see and then tie a bow and that's the closure for this one really quite simple isn't it but it looks really really cool and then I have some beads on the end here as well all right so that's that one this is the longest one that I've made I have four pages I'll quickly show you what I did here very grungy I use that scrunched up paper and then I did this. This is just a bit of yarn that I looped through and then tied a knot at the back and added beads. That's what the back looks like. Sorry, this is really difficult to show you because it's all kind of not straight, not flat. All right, on this one here, just a piece of ephemera glued down and then a bit of a different type of sewing and a red thread. And then over here, a bit of cheesecloth, you know, adding to that grunge overall thing. And moving along over here, this is the first page. All sorts of things happening there. I'm not going to go into detail, but there's this and then, you know, all sorts of different things. Okay, and then when I roll it up, all right, so that's all rolled up. And then on the front, this book page already had some images. Not that it's very visible, but for the closure, look how easy this is. All I did is two eyelets and then I looped some sari silk through a shank button and then when it's pulled tight the button kind of stays in place this can't be pulled all the way through because i also have some beads at the end then i have some sewing here on the edge added a little charm up here and then to close it i simply wrap this around and then around the button it's just the way that i've been doing it and then either this way you know you you get the point like we're just keeping it closed, wrapping it around. And that's that one. Really simple. And it has these beads hanging out. This is the first one that I made. And I'll just quickly demonstrate. This is how the closure works. All right. I did two holes. You can place eyelets there to make it more sturdy. Next, I grabbed sari silk. I have yarn on my desk, so I'm just going to use that to demonstrate. Next thing you need is some type of a shank button. Shank button is this, this type of button, not the flat buttons, but you could use a flat button too, but I use the shank button. So we have that. I'll use this one and then you loop your twine or whatever it is that you're using through just like so to the middle. You don't need to tie any knots, anything like that. And then you pop it through the first hole and pull all the way through. And that shank part of the button might go all the way through the hole, depending on how big the hole is, or it might just sit on top, which is also good because you have space to wrap things around. And now this part goes back through this hole here, just like that. And there we have it. Then you use this part to wrap around your project and around the button. And there's a closure. How cool is that closure? So let's see it in action again. That's what it looks like on the inside. Also adds character. And you wrap it around. You can just wrap around all the way or around the button and then back out here. I kind of worked out how to do it so that I have these beads kind of at the level where I want them. 
So that's a pretty cool closure. But my favorite closure is this one here. Took me a little while to figure this one out, how to do it, but I will show you how it's done. It's so simple. But before we get to a closure, I wanted to show you one simple little thing that I did in here. I don't know really how well you can see this in the video, but I did, you have four holes and I just kind of did that X thing with some twine. And then I tied this one up the top here and stapled it down to keep it in place. And this one down the bottom here and stapled it down. And the staples, of course, also add character to this kind of thing. And then because I have one on top and one down the bottom here, imagine if you had a longer roll and you had more of these sections and then you had more of those twine pieces sticking out. When I roll this up, I have some up the top and some down the bottom and I love that messy look. Okay, let's talk about the closure. The closure is simply a leftover piece. You can use any little piece of paper that you have. So when I cut this piece down for this to be my hinge, I was left over with little pieces like this. And I thought that looks cool for a closure. And it already had those holes because these pieces actually came from an old album that I took apart. So, and that's how I was bound. Instead of talking about how I did this closure, I'm actually going to do the same closure for my scroll today. Okay, so I have this piece and I really like this ripped edge here, but these are straight edges. I'm gonna try and make that messy somehow. Maybe I can just do this. Also I have this little tool. I mean, you can use the edge of scissors to do this, like to, you know, you don't have to have a specialized tool. It doesn't really do anything different than scissors would. Let's test it out. Mess up to those edges a little bit. Next, I'm gonna really grunge it up. All right. Next, I might actually add some eyelets in here. The eyelets are totally optional, but they do provide strength. If you don't have eyelets, maybe it's best to try and reinforce it with something like these little ring, these little reinforcers. I don't know what they're called, you know, as long as you reinforce it with something, it will give it extra durability. Okay, now I'm just going to set the eyelets. Okay, eyelets are set. And now what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to glue that in place somewhere there in the middle. And I'm only doing this so that it stays in place while I take it to my sewing machine. And now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew all the way around this piece to make it really like the focal point of the whole thing. Look how cool that looks. It reminds me of some sort of an old vintage map or something like that. You're not going to believe how simple this closure is. Okay, so for the closure, I'm using this twine that I have. I don't even know if it's called twine. Now watch this. All right, so I have that and I have my two ends and they're going to go through the eyelets over here from the outside in. Okay, that's all we did. We don't have to actually do anything here. Just leave it as it is. Wrap the scroll or roll the scroll up. And now we're going to determine the length that we need here. So I only want to wrap this around once. I don't want to loop it, you know, wrap too many times because then it's hiding that uh, very important part here because that's the loop. Okay, so we're just going to do once, make a little space there, pop this through, and you see as you pop it through, see what happens? That closes tight. Now, in order for this, like that's the closure, that's, that's it. In order for this not to kind of fall off the whole piece, I added beads. See what I did here? Just beads. All right. And that's all loose. So that can actually be pulled all the way, but it's not going to come through because the beads are keeping it intact. But we're keeping this just like that so that we can play around with tightening the roll and all that stuff. So when you wrap it around, you just make yourself a little bit of space there. This goes through and then you tighten. Like, does it get any simpler than that for a closure? I love this closure so much. Okay, so determining the length here, I'd say I want the beads maybe around here. So first I'm going to put some beads on 
and I think for this kind of thing wooden beads look really nice I don't actually have that many wooden beads and actually it has to the bead has to have a large enough opening for this to go through so maybe something like this or like the same ones that I used before I really only have a this would be perfect but I only have one left just that little one there so can't use that I'm gonna go with this try and get that bead on there and sometimes it could be a little bit difficult but it helps if you twist pop it on if you can't get it on if you add a little bit of glue I haven't done that here but you can I, I will if it doesn't work and the beads are on now wrap make some space pop the beads through and then tighten and now I'm determining where I want the beads to sit something like that and then tie a knot probably could have left it a bit longer but that's mm, fine trim this off and there we have that very simple but really really cool looking closure the closure kind of makes this part the front of the scroll so i don't really have to embellish it in any way if you're using this type of closure this part is the focal area rather than i mean this also can be i think what i'm trying to say is that i don't feel like i need to go and do anything here even though a little bit of sewing might look nice there as well and i just couldn't help myself so i just did a tiny little bit of sewing up there and down here just for a little something more this can go so many different ways you can do all sorts of different things all sorts of different closures you can really have a lot of freedom with this type of a thing because of the grunge and the messiness and you can really let yourself explore all the different options and fun things that you can do so here they are in all their glory. I would say the first one that I made is my least favorite and my favorite one is this one here and I just wanted to remind you of this beautiful effect that you can do with pages that are different sizes and then you can have shorter and shorter and shorter and really have that scroll kind of a look happening on both ends. I would have kept going with this one and had shorter, shorter, shorter pages, but I only thought of that idea very late last night, so I kind of had to get it out. And that's also the reason why the inside of this one is not embellished at all. And of course, the pieces that you can add on the inside because of the rolling up action, you can use to embellish the outside. That looks pretty cool. So this is now the moment where I ask you to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you feel inspired? Did you enjoy this video? How much do you like this idea? Like, what are your thoughts of this whole grunge scroll thing where it's not really a practical thing to do? I got interrupted by a phone call. So what I was trying to say is it's a practical thing to do. It's not difficult to do, but the thing itself is not that practical because it's not like you're making a journal where you can use the pages to get your thought, thoughts out and heal your emotional pains and whatever you use your journal for. This is just a thing that you make. That's one of those things that are really, really cool, but what do you use them for? Well, I think the possibilities are endless. You can make them in so many different ways where you have lots of space for writing. It can simply be like a large master board also that you simply roll up. You can make them and then hack into them, which personally I wouldn't do. They're like little pieces of artwork. They don't necessarily have to have a purpose. I think the purpose can be just the making process. I think they'll make wonderful little gifts especially if you personalize it with all the things that you can use to embellish the inside. You can write little motivational quotes inside for the gift recipient. I don't know, there's plenty of things we can use them for, but it's not really that useful. I don't know, is that what I'm trying to say? I'm not even sure myself. So I invite you to pose your questions in the description box, not the description box, the comment section, and also your ideas on how you can make these more personalized or what you can use to embellish them as well or a different purpose perhaps for them that I haven't mentioned or thought of. I really want to hear your thoughts. All right, I think that's enough for me today. Thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!